Okay, so as we walk through the front door, we go down this ramp, which is great because it's handicap accessible. And the ticker, ticket taker is gonna be right here. Currently the uh, museum admission is $6 for adults and children under five and active military are free. Oh, where do I go to first? I'll tell you what, let's do downstairs first and I'll bring you right over to the fossil fish head, which I think is kind of clever. This right here, it's a fossil fish head and body. <laughs> and then here are a number of other fossils that represent a lot of different sea creatures, including the trilobites. And I really like, you know, these trilobites right here are you know, normal size, normal size meaning of what you would normally think they are, but then you've got ones that are a good 15 inches. And this is a real fossil, not a replica. And look at the, the amount of death that takes place um, in uh, this fossil record. I mean, those are all fish, all clumped together, all dying at the same time. All right, here we got dinosaur eggs. And of course, you're gonna, when you come to the Creation Evidence Museum, you can take your time and read everything and see more than what you're gonna see here today. There's saber tooth. Yeah. And this is the giant beaver skull. I'll put my hand next to it to give you an idea on relative size from a six foot beaver. This is interesting here. In uh, Cambodia, there is this uh, carving that's on a temple that's approximately 900 years old. And it looks like a dinosaur. And the thing is, is that we haven't known what dinosaurs looked like until the early 1800s. So that's interesting. Did they have knowledge of dinosaurs? Did dinosaurs rule with humans? Well, from a creationist perspective, yes. Um, from an evolutionary perspective, no, they're uh, separated by about six, 60 million or more years. All right, so over here, this right here, which is really interesting, is a fake foot fossil. You're going to see some real foot fossils in just a moment, and this one is a fake. This right here is a dinosaur print with what they believe to be a human footprint inside of it. <clears throat> and then you have the library over here, <laughs> the gift shop, with lots of, of uh, books, and uh, they have paintings and DVDs, a lot of cool stuff. And everything is just chock full of fossils. You like fossils? You're going to love it. Okay, this is one of my favorite places in the museum because the artifacts here are absolutely incredible. <clears throat> talking, about, talking about footprints and stone, here we go. Now here's the problem. The problem is, is it's Cretaceous rock, uh, which means that one would, could, would have to conclude as an evolutionist that these footprints are faked. But they've had them checked out. Either they have had them sawed open to see if there's compression in the mud or they put them through a special type of CT scan and seen whether there is the proper kind of pressure or compression that is in the fossil, and there is. Fakes do not have it. Real ones do. Mud squishing between the toes, the weight of the individual pressing down, and then underneath that, if we were to cut that open, instead of doing the CT scan, which was what they did, you would see the mud compressed or not. If it's fake, you would not see it compressed. Here are some additional examples of footprints. Again, if the footprints themselves were interesting, the fact that they're in the type of stone that they are is anomalous. Why? Because Cretaceous limestone, here at least in the uh, Paluxy River area in Glen Rose is about, according to evolutionary timetable, about 100 to 108 million years old. This one is even more astounding. Should this prove itself to be true, and many people do, and we have some high-res 
video of this out, you know, with the case off so there's no reflection, the Meister print. Uh, this is in uh, rock that is, again, uh, dated by the evolutionists as five to maybe 600 million years old. There's two trilobites in the print. It's a 10 and a half inch, what looks like a moccasin or shoe print. Again, should not be there. Now, talking about something that should not be there, in the sandstone, um, which is even older than um, Cretaceous limestone, is an alleged, <laughs> I think it goes beyond alleged, handprint. So this push in, person pushed off of the ground. The majority of the weight was right here. It's deeper, and my hand just barely fits in there. Again, that shouldn't be there considering the age of the rock. Now, the, the solution to having dinosaurs and humans together or handprints or footprints in rock that are allegedly 100, 200, or even 500 million years old can all be resolved if one looks at the worldwide flood 4,500 years ago as a geological anomaly, really, with intense amount of geological activity accelerating some of these processes, and you can have humans and dinosaurs in the same place 4,500 years ago and have a handprint in sandstone mud that then hardens and then masquerades as something that's 200, 300 million years old today. The world famous London artifact, the hammer in stone. And again, we have more videos on this high resolution um, without the glare of the case. And these right here, you could easily skip over and say, oh, okay, nice little, nice, nice little jars. But no, there is a baby dinosaur on one of them. You've got a squirrel right there. You've got a frog right there, but that, my friends, is a dinosaur, and this is 1200 A.D. from Central America. Interesting. Over here we have... We have some dinosaur skin, which is very cool. You don't think about, you know what the dinosaur's skin looked like, and it looks like it's in patterns. Then you've got these little bulbous things that they believe is like bubble wrap. It was, it was pliable. And this is probably what you're gonna see next. One of the most startling of all of the artifacts, and that's the Delk print. The Delk print has a dinosaur print. And again, look on our channel for our high resolution, uh, without any glare, any case on this, and then the human print right next to it. Do you see it? Do you see the big toe right there and the toes following it? How this is impinging on this or is this impinging on that? We'll have more information on that. That is called the Delk print. All right, over here we have the Ica stones from Peru, Ica, Peru. And what's interesting about these is, and the controversy is, is that the rocks uh, have dinosaurs on them. These are allegedly hundreds of years old. Uh, here we've got one dated at 700 AD, and the problem with that is is that there should be no dinosaurs depicted on anything prior to 1840 when we constructed and started to begin to understand what they looked like unless people actually saw dinosaurs and then etched their figures on these stones. These are burial stones, but it goes beyond that. We've got heart surgery going on over here and brain surgery going on over here. And when you come here, you can take a closer look to at these stones and see for yourself whether or not they're for real. <laughs> All right, there's more, a lot more here that we haven't even gotten to, but we're gonna move on. This right here is probably one of the greatest experiments that's been done since Tesla you know, set up the uh, AC power distribution uh, grid network for what we use today. This experiment is called the biosphere, and the biosphere is this incredible chamber that is going to replicate the uh, conditions of the atmosphere um, and the uh, earth science, if you might want to call, of, of the earth before the flood. Uh, it's going to have a higher barometric pressure, equaling what they assume is the barometric pressure that was before the flood. Also, uh, the oxygen levels will be uh, kicked up some, even the carbon dioxide. And then what's really cool is, is that there's an electromagnetic tube in there that's going to 
enhance or equate to what the electromagnetic field was again before the flood some 4,500 years ago. Then we're go they're going to have plant, animal, insect experiments in here to see just exactly how a pre-flood or what they believe is a pre-flood environment has the effect on them. Will they live longer? Will they grow larger? What else will we find out? That is going to happen in 2022. Let's move on. <clears throat> We're going to go upstairs to the second level, and up here you're going to find a whole host of very, very cool things. Now, it's easy just to skip by this because there's a little bit of reading involved, but I like this because it, it says archaeology confirms 50 real people in the Bible. Archaeologist, not necessarily people looking for or against the the Bible and the veracity of the Old Testament have identified 50 people in archaeology that are mentioned in the Old Testament. Interesting. And one of those um, relics of the past is this steel, which is from 846 BC. And this is a replica of it. It was intact at one time, and then they broke it up, and then they had to put it back together. But um, what it does is it talks about the house of David, uh, the name of God, uh, Yahweh, and it mentions a king that's in the Old Testament in, I believe, 2 Kings. Interesting. And then we have some other Jewish relics and pots from long ago. Some of these things you're going to want to spend a little bit of time just looking over. This is interesting right here. This painting shows the earth without form and void and darkness is over the face of the deep. That's Genesis 1.1. There is the spirit of God hovering over the face of the waters or the deep. And he said, let there be light. And there was light. The moon and the stars and the planets were formed. And then we have the earth separating, you know, from the water and then dry land and then let the earth bring forth grass and plants and trees and bugs, eventually the aquatic animals and then the mammals and humans on day six. And of course, Adam. And then out of Adam's rib came Eve. Then there was the worldwide flood. And the water here is coming down. And it's also breaking apart and coming up. Floods the earth over a six-week period. But the worldwide flood was 371 days total. And there's the Ark of Safety where uh, a zoo and eight humans were on board. This you're going to want to take a look at, not skip over too quickly, and learn a little bit about Ed Davis before you come to the museum. Uh, he is one of the more credible eyewitnesses of Noah's Ark. Get into it, learn a little bit about Ed, because when you do come here and you're going to see some of his artifacts that he donated, it'll make more sense. Continuing on, after the flood, the oceans were created, and then Pangaea took place. And then we have 4,500 years between here and here. And this is where it all, unfortunately, breaks apart. The earth is just going to convulse and break apart before this is, just as this is ending. With the second coming of Christ being the, the, um, uh, the crescendo for earth's present existence. And after a thousand years, it'll be recreated like it was before the Garden of Eden with the tree of life and everyone will have their country home right here <laughs> and there you have it there's paradise you know religions they pine for it you know um they want it you've heard the word nirvana you know the muslims want it everybody wants that kind of peace and uh, restoration up here this is totally devoted to noah's ark take your time look it over read it's uh it's absolutely fascinating this is ed davis right here 
And this is a depiction in 1943 when Ed Davis was brought up the mountain by one of the local uh, Turks. And in 1943, he saw the Ark busted in two. He saw it about a half a mile away, and they were they were uh, the two pieces were about a half a mile uh, from each other. He was able to, because it's so large. He was able to see inside the ark uh, somewhat, and he was able to describe it with great detail. This right here is called the invitation. It is a, the most um, accurate rendition of this scene, the where they're about to enter the ark uh, that's ever been done uh, by artist Alfred Lee, who himself has been on the famed mountain four times looking for Noah's Ark and found Noah's Ark wood. Now, let me show you this incredible model of Noah's Ark. I spoke to the gentleman who built this, took a year and a half, and it is the most accurate and the most detailed model of Noah's Ark you will ever want to see. You're going to want to take your time and look at the different compartments and understand just exactly how um, you know, according to eyewitness reports and the account in Genesis, um, what it possibly could have looked like, it's more intricate than I had imagined. He had to explain to me that they even had water distribution. <laughs> they even had waste distribution, and I don't know the half of it, but I, I caught this <laughs> just this morning after he told me yesterday, or day before yesterday, about the water distribution. And this is, uh, this is something that's assumed that they had um, a reservoir of sort that was able to pump the water out and in. Remember, the, the, the seawater was not salty just yet. Uh, it, it, the ark um, bobbed up and down for 150 days before it started to abate. That is the level abating um, on it, uh, on the earth. And so um, it wasn't until all of the salt that was leached off of the, uh, the earth, the soil, into the sea, into the ocean, did the oceans become salty. So they were still fresh water. Look at this. It's amazing. Some amazing accomplishments for mankind. <laughs> and look at this. Even a few artifacts from yesteryear. My wife is down there saying, hey, did you do the, <laughs> I'm going to go back downstairs. Let's just go ahead and just walk right back down. And by the way, while we do, let's stop at this display and I'll show you that piece of Noah's Ark wood that Alfred Lee took down in 1969. And you'll be able to see it right here. This was the wood that they removed in 1969 from about 13, between 13 and 14,000 feet up on Mount Ararat. My wife wanted you to see something really interesting. Before the flood, oh, and this was used in Jurassic Park, literally, the movie from Jurassic Park. Uh, this was the dinosaur, rubber dinosaur. Okay, all right, here we go. <laughs> My wife wants to show off one last thing before we wrap this up. Kristen, what did you want to show these folks? Hold on one second. I'm going to pass the mic to her. Okay. So even though most museums have replicas, um, which is totally acceptable, these three things I find particularly fascinating. This is an actual cast. So they pour stuff down into the, the print. This is an actual cast of a dinosaur toe. I mean, so this is the actual um, toes on it. I find that fascinating. This is fascinating. This is the actual um, Acrocanthosaurus track, and it shows that the dinosaur stepped on clams. And this had to have been covered really quickly because, um, you know, normally, you know, if you stand on a beach, your footprints fill right in quickly uh, with water and they just kind of disappear. So this must have been filled in quickly with uh, mud and covered up and fossilized. Because they wiggled out right there, those clams. <laughs> yeah. And then this is really cool. If, look up Lepidodendron um, fossils and you'll find that uh, they were a scaly type tree. Most of them, or many of them, it says, are more than um, a di one diameter. Sorry, one meter in diameter. So, I mean, a meter across normally. And these things are often more than 50 meters high. So, um, yeah. again, fascinating. And they have beautiful designs on them, uh, the, the, the spiral. So, again, these things from the very get-go, complex, gorgeous, and I just think it's fascinating.